Are the strategies I've been sharing with you illegal and considered mail fraud when it comes to trying to fix and repair your personal credit? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of information on exactly what you should do to fix your credit as quickly as possible and what you should not do. My name is Monica Main. I'm a serial entrepreneur and successful real estate investor. And I've been getting a lot of blowback online for some of the credit videos that I've been posting in the last couple of months. And so I'm here to set the record straight. So here we go. Buckle up your seatbelts because I have a lot of stuff to come, especially for those of you that are trolls. I have a lot of information to share with you and some harsh words for some of you. So let's get into it. Okay, so it's really disturbing to me that people, there's, there's just no decorum anymore in society, it seems. You know, back in the day, people actually were respectful to one another. People treated each other with respect face to face. And now there's this little thing called the internet where trolls can hide out in mommy's basement, be a complete douchey douchebag, and just sit there and just troll people on the internet, just, I guess, for shits and giggles, if you will. And I guess that makes them feel good. Now, here's what I've noticed about these loser trolls, the tools that I call them. And that is, they're all men. And so not all men are like this. In fact, I know some amazing and spectacular men that are my students and have been for the last several decades. But there's some trolly men, loser men, men that are threatened by a female who's powerful, who's successful, who's wealthy who makes them feel like this, which is exactly what they are, little itty bitty guys. And instead of doing something about that, something maybe productive or something that can maybe make them a little successful, they feel like it's appropriate to shut down a woman who they deem to be too powerful for them, as with the case with me. And so I was starting to get trolled by these loser douchey men who just started to say some really negative mean things to me. One of them was, that maybe I should grow my hair out because people wouldn't take me seriously. Well, hello, take a look at Susie Orman. She's one of the most famous wealthy women out there who teaches people about finance and she's got short hair. Okay. Hello. Newsflash. So just because you have short hair doesn't mean that you don't know anything less. In fact, I shouldn't have to grow out my hair to make it seem like I know what I'm talking about. The other person, another douchey guy said that I was a lesbian because of my hair. Again, two hair, two hair comments. And I'm not a lesbian. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a lesbian. Even if I was, I would admit to it. But I'm not. But still, it's like, why are these comments considered respectable to some of these men who think that that's appropriate to start shouting things out there? Would you say that to somebody in a subway or in a grocery store? Like, would you make these comments? Because if you don't feel like you'd make these kinds of comments to people in public, then don't make it online because that's completely douchey and inappropriate and it makes you look like a tool, which is likely what you are. Now, of course, I'm not directly directing this to everybody, just the people, and you know who you are, the douchey trolls that just sit around on, you know, mommy's basement typing stuff. I'm a big man because I can insult people online. It's like, come on, it makes you just look like the loser that you are. And I end up banning people from my channel that doesn't, that do that kind of stuff anyway. I'm here to help the underdog, the person who has been screwed over, the person who just feels like you don't have any hope, especially when it comes to your credit or your financial outlook and situation. I'm here to help and serve you. That is what I'm here for. But fortunately and unfortunately for some of you, this is where my credit journey with you ends because I'm no longer willing and able to work with and deal with a lot of the online trolling that I've been dealing with in the last week or so. And so I'm going to give you everything that I have as far as helping you fix your credit. And then you can utilize all of the other videos that I've had. I'm going to have them up for a short period of time and then eventually I'm going to take them all down. But you can at least utilize my unorthodox and highly effective strategies to incredibly and massively boost your FICO score, especially if you're having credit problems right now. And so again, this is due to the fact that people have been trolling me and I just have zero tolerance for that. And again, it's all guys, all these little itty bitty bitty, and we all know what's probably downstairs, little itty bitty bitty. And then unfortunately they feel like, well, I'm, I'll be a man if I just sit in mommy's basement and I troll this person online, I'm going to be a man and I'm going to feel better about myself for saying she's got short hair and I can't take her you know, seriously or that she's a lesbian or she's this or that. It's like, dude, come on, get a life. I'm not a lesbian. I've been married three times to, to three different men. 
And because they weren't men enough for me, I kicked them all to the curb and that's how I operate and that's how I roll. And you would never be able to be man enough, not only to even have a conversation with me, but probably not even be in the same room with me. So just, just know your place, okay? Because <laughs> you have to be pretty alpha male to be able to have a conversation with me. And these, these tooly douchey guys are just simply not there. So just to set the record straight on how you can fix your credit as quickly as possible, using my most incredible strategies. I'm gonna start from beginning to end and share with you exactly what you need to know to get your FICO score up there and get all these negative marks that are negatively affecting your credit score and get them off immediately, all right? So let us begin. It first starts with you pulling all three credit reporting bureau reports. That's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. I like to go to Experian.com and pay the $39.95 and get all three credit reports and all three FICO scores. Now, I know you can get your free credit report by going directly to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. You can do this once a year as per federal law, or you can get it any time that you've been declined credit. However, they like that you write in. You have to actually send a letter in. You can do an online inquiry as well but they like to actually physically receive a letter from you stating that you want to see a copy of a credit report and then they'll mail it to you and that takes forever, forever and ever. And then they don't give you a FICO score on top of that. So if that's what you want to do and you want to wait around until you're old and gray waiting for your free credit report, by all means do it that way. And again, you won't get your FICO score. Otherwise, do it the quick and easy way. Do it online, get all your three FICO scores and all your three credit reports so that you immediately know how to start tackling your credit repair situation. So first and foremost, if you get it online by Experian.com, pay the 40 bucks for it, get all three credit reports, all three credit FICO scores, then usually at the very top of the report, it will share with you immediately on page one and page two, if you have a lot of negatives, exactly what's negatively impacting your FICO score, negatively impacting your credit reports. And that's where you start you have to start the process of disputing all of the things that are negatively impacting your credit report. And so that's how it starts. I have free dispute letters that you'll find in the description box. You can go to dis getdisputeletters.com. That's my website. You basically type in your name and email address and you can gain immediate and instant access to all of my templates for the purposes of disputing the three credit reporting bureaus. And so I will give you that. That's in the description box down below. And so you start always with the bureaus. Now to be very clear, you should do it by way of mail. Everybody talks about how easy it is to file everything online. Okay, that's great. But did you know that when you do your disputes online, it's a computer talking to another computer. So essentially what happens is that they will send they the bureaus will send out a notification to your creditor or collection agency online through another computer saying hey this person our our equal client is stating that this is not their debt or this is inaccurate information and then another computer will instantly shoot back a message saying yes it is and then it basically stays on your credit report forever and ever and ever because they will not do another investigation after that point even if you send in a request to do an investigation. So instead of doing it that way, instead of being lazy and just wanting to do it online, the online dispute process simply doesn't work. It does not work in your favor. It's never worked in anyone's favor. Do not do that. You have to do it the snail mail method. This is why you wanna get my dispute letters down below in the description box for free. And you can send those letters out and this is what we call dispute round one. So dispute round one, a letter will go to Experian, a letter will go to Equifax, a letter will go to TransUnion. Make sure that you send in a copy of your driver's license or a state ID card, as long as it's current, or your current passport, and two utility bills that have your current name and address, okay? Now, if you do not have your current address on your driver's license or state issue with ID card, go to the DMV and update it. Hello, you should have done that already anyway. And then that way it just further corroborates the fact that you currently live at this address. Now, if you don't have two utility bills, maybe somebody else is paying you utilities, then the next best thing would be to have an insurance bill, 
cell phone bill, credit card bill, something, but at least two other bills. Utilities are always preferred though. The reason we want to do this is because a lot of times the credit bureaus, especially if they're overwhelmed, especially over the holiday season, what they like to do is buy themselves time, which means that they will send you a nice little form letter in the mail saying, we don't believe that it's you, you that is initiating these disputes. So therefore, we are demanding that you send a copy of your driver's license and proof that you live at this address. They do this to buy themselves time. They do this all the time. You don't want to give them the opportunity to buy themselves some extra time. So you definitely want to send in a copy of your driver's license, state issued ID card, or a current passport, along with your two utility bills or two other bills. So then that way they can't say that it's not you. Further, when you sign your letter, I always like to just sign an initial and circle my name. I don't ever like to put my legal signature on anything, especially if, when, when it comes to the point where you're going to be dealing with your creditors and collection agencies, which is down the road, not right now. We don't want to communicate with the creditors or collection agencies right now. We have to start our rounds of disputes with the credit reporting bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion first. And then, and only then, after we do two or three rounds with them, as I call it, then you can communicate directly with the creditors or collection agencies. So this is how it starts. Round one, you'll send a letter to Experian, a letter to Equifax, and a letter to TransUnion. Make sure that it is USPS trackable, which means, you, and even better if it's signature confirmation, even better if you want to send a certified letter to them requiring a wet signature from somebody that works at Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. That way they know that you're taking this seriously in the very moment that they receive the letter. That's what starts the 30-day calendar day process. It's 30 calendar days in which they must complete the investigation. Your first round of letters will simply state that these debts are inaccurate and need to be investigated. You're not saying that they are your debt. You're not saying that they aren't your debt. You're simply saying that they need to be investigated. Nine times out of 10, they are in, they're inaccurate because if you've ever noticed on your Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion report, if you have, say, for example, a collection agency or some other kind of reporting um, debt debtor, I guess you could say, many times that the, they don't line up. Like one creditor um, might be listed on Experian saying that you owe $5,267. The Ex Experian one might say that you owe uh, $6,247. And then the other one might say that you owe $5,318. They're all going to be different because it's based on how fast that they're reporting all of these extra fees and interest and compounding you know, fees and interest together. And then if you're in collections, they might be adding legal fees to it. So that there, it's going to differ. This means that the information clearly is inaccurate because it's obviously not the same amount, right? Furthermore, many times you didn't even agree to these extra fees, which means it's further inaccurate. So you're not lying to them by saying that it's inaccurate information. So this is one of the dispute letters that you can get for free. You can go to getdisputeletters.com. The information is located in the description box below where you can get my free dispute letters. And you can use those as a template for round one. So you wait. After you send in the letters, you have to wait the 30 days. I like to wait 35 days because it gives them time to get the responses back to you. And what will happen is by federal law, they have to do an investigation. And then they will send you information about what happened in the investigation. Save every scrap of paper that they give to you. Never throw it away because when things start falling off your credit, if you throw any of those things away and another collection agency buys that debt, they can put it back on your credit and you will have no proof that it fell off. Because as per federal law, if something falls off your credit from an original creditor and say another collection agency buys that debt and tries to put it back on, if it's already fallen off, even if it was with a different creditor or collection agency on that same debt and that same original account, they can't put that back on your credit as per federal law. So if you have proof that it fell off, meaning you saved all your paperwork, then you just basically say, no, uh, 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 take a look at this copy of this correspondence that I received from Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, clearly saying that it fell off. You can't put this back on again, even if it's a different creditor or collection agency that took over the debt, as long as it's the same originating debt, if that makes sense. So you have to save all your paperwork, like have meticulous files. Do a file, like one for Experian, one for Equifax, one for TransUnion and do one every quarter or one um, every month or whatever you want to do and then have a credit log to whereas you can keep track. You can keep track either a physical log that you write 
things down on in the file folder, or you can do an Excel spreadsheet credit log. I prefer the Excel spreadsheet because I can include more information. Plus, my handwriting tends to be really bad anyway, so I end up you know, not being able to read half of what I have to say. So I like to type it all in. So that's the way you start your disputes. You want to do about two or three disputes, which would take a roughly 90 something days, uh, 90, 90 and a half days, or 90, I say 90 days, maybe 100 days, okay, front to back. So ideally, you'll have done those three disputes. And then when things have not fallen off, then I suggest you contact your creditors and collection agencies directly. Now, this is tricky. You need to listen up because you don't want to just willy-nilly say, oh, here's my new information and my new address and my new this and that. Get yourself a P.O. box or something so that you're, they don't know what your current address is. You don't want anybody to know. I mean, they could figure it out anyway, but you just want to make yourself kind of somewhat obscure. And so when you're communicating with them, you do not send them your copy of your ID. You do not send them a copy of your passport. You do not send them a copy of your utility bills or any other information. You just simply send them a letter stating, as per federal law, you do need to show proof that this is my account because um, you know I just want to see the, the, the proof that you're stating that this is my account and that I owe you money. I need to see an original contract or some kind of sales agreement. Now, you are. this is well within your right. And if somebody sends you just simply a statement or an invoice, that's not a legal contract, okay? I can literally whip together in my Quicken or QuickBooks software an invoice or a statement stating that you owe me a million dollars. I could do it like pretty much instantly like that. That doesn't mean that that's true. I would need to furnish a be, be able to show you a contract that we engaged in that you signed stating that you agreed to pay me a million dollars for whatever or that you are a million dollars in debt. And so beyond that, it's not an agreement. So you by law have the right to ask for this contract from the creditor or collection agency. Now the collection agencies are the best because they don't have anything from the original creditor. They have nothing. They literally bought a debt from somebody else for pennies on the dollar and they're now going after you for that debt to try to collect on their investment. So they don't have any files. They don't have any contracts. They don't have, say for example, you bought a car and it got repossessed and some ABC collection agency somewhere decided to buy that debt for pennies on the dollar to try to collect and make money. These, these collection agencies make a ton of money by buying a debt that like, for example, they'll buy a debt for 10 cents on the dollar and they'll turn around and they'll get 20 cents on the dollar by trying to negotiate with you. And so they don't have any of the original paperwork. They just bought the debt and they just bought the paper, but they don't even have the contract. So when you go after them and say, I need proof of this original agreement that we have, meaning I didn't even agree with anything. I don't know who you are, ABC collection agency. We never had an agreement. Who the hell are you all of a sudden? And you can literally say, I don't know who you are. I need to see the original agreement that I signed stating that I agreed to this debt. And you do this by way of USPS certified mail, meaning you send them the letter demanding that they show proof of the original agreement or contract for the debt, right? Use a PO box. Do not give them any of your information, your personal house address. You don't want to give them your driver's license information. You don't want to give them any utility bills. That's only for the bureaus, not for the creditor or collection agency. And you send them the letter by way of USPS, that's United States Postal Service, certified mail, meaning that on one side, they're basically going to have the address of the creditor. On the other side, it's going to have a return address going back to you so that basically what will happen is the postal carrier will go to the credit uh, collection agency and say, you need to sign this. They sign it and then they'll rip the card off and then they'll mail it back to you. It's like a postcard. It's like a green postcard. And so you can use this as proof that they received your request. Then you wait 30 days. And if they don't furnish you any proof, meaning a legitimate legal contract that you signed and agreed to, then basically you go back to the bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. You basically say, hey, I sent this letter to ABC Collection Agency. And guess what? They didn't send me anything back. Here's a copy of their wet signature stating that they, they, sh they received it. So here's a copy of the green card that, that I received back with their wet signature. And here's the letter that I sent on X date. And here we are 35 days later and nothing. And as per federal law, they did not get back to me. And unfortunately, you know, 
this means that I don't owe, it, owe this because they clearly don't have any contract or any original agreement. And so you send that to the bureaus, Experian, FX, and TransUnion all separately, and they must remove it off your credit reports because they never responded. These people who claim you owe this debt have never responded. Now, I got a lot of backlash when I posted this video about this because I talked about this one particular situation. It was an example that happened well over 20 years ago. And by the way, if you guys don't understand what a statute of limitations is, please look it up. Please look it up online. There is a statute of limitations, you know, when you kind of bumble around and you don't really know what you're doing and maybe you made a mistake years and years and years ago. There's something called the statute of limitations. So I know that some of you watched, you know, a couple episodes of FBI and NCIS and, you know, uh, how to get away with murder and you think that you're, you know, armchair lawyers. But the reality is when you make a mistake or you do something over 20 years ago, unless it's murder, you know, there's a statute of limitations. So get, get, get for real here. It's, it's like there's not a lot that they can do. So I used an example of something that happened over 20 years ago. And it was a story. And if you want to check out the story, you can check out the video. I'm not going to you know, relay or relate the, the story again. But it basically talks about how there was a situation where the creditor was bankrupt and stated that $50 was owed. And because the company was bankrupt and no longer had a valid address, there was nowhere to send a USPS certified letter because they were bankrupt. Meantime, the credit bureaus were notified of this, but the bureaus violated federal law, did not do the investigation, kept the debt on there anyway. So it was just an extreme situation where it was just like, what do you do in a situation like that? Do you just take it? Do you bend over and take it? I mean, what do you do? And as the little guy, unfortunately, many of these banks and creditors are crooks in their own right. They charge you obscene fees that you never agreed to, never known about. And they have no problem doing any of this. And they will literally ruin your credit. They will ruin your life for the next seven plus years of your life. They literally will. They'll call you even if you send them a cease and desist notification in the mail. They will still call you. They'll call your neighbors. They'll call your boss. They will literally ruin your life. They'll make you lose your job. Or even if you can't even get a job because of your credit rating. I mean, these people are so vindictive and vicious. It's crazy. And yet nobody bats an eyelash about what they do behind the scenes to make sure that your life is miserable. And yes, okay, so maybe you did owe the money. Maybe something happened to where you got a credit card and you lost your job, you couldn't pay it. Okay, well, it sucks that you weren't able to get another car, another job to be able to pay that credit card. But what if it was a more extreme situation? Like I even had somebody comment in one of my videos and she's like, well, you know, nothing happened to me. I just pay all my bills and I'm just so righteous and I'm better than everybody. Well, first of all, why are you watching credit videos then? If you are so righteous and you pay all your bills and you have an 800 plus FICO score, like why are you watching credit repair videos? Like, hello, there's something wrong there. But she just had this nasty attitude about, how everybody who can't pay their bills or has a low FICO score is a loser. Well, what if something happens? And I even said this to her. I said, what happens then if you were in a major car accident and they basically scooped your body out of a ditch, you were in the hospital for three months and your insurance didn't cover it or you didn't even have the right insurance. You didn't have any insurance at all, right? Or your insurance lapsed. This happened to my second husband, husband number two, where he had a heart attack. And it was personal insurance, and this was before the days of Obamacare, whether you love it or hate it. It was before the, the days before the, when, when an insurance company could literally cancel you like that, provided that you know you, you can even be paying your policy every single month and they could cancel you just because they don't like you that day, right? So that was back in those days. So while he was in the hospital getting care for his heart attack, they canceled his insurance. And so there were a lot of bills, like tens of thousands of dollars of bills that we had to cover um, because of that situation. And so we could afford it. I could afford to pay those bills, but a lot of people can't afford to pay those bills. So I asked her, I'm like, what happens in a situation like that where you're underinsured and or your insurance company canceled you and you can't pay the $100,000 plus in hospital bills for your 90 day stay at the hospital? Like what happens then? Miss Righteous, like what happens then? Yeah, I know you pay all your bills. Congratulations. I'm glad you pay all your bills. That's great. But what do you do? And so medical bills are probably the worst things on people's credit reports. It's the biggest contention in most marriages. It'll ruin people's lives like you wouldn't believe. And it's just such an overwhelming debt that you don't know how to even get out from under it. And so the United States 
postal service certified mail strategy is the way to go. So that's after you do your three rounds of disputes, or at least at the very least two rounds of disputes with the credit reporting bureaus, then and only then are you allowed to now communicate directly with the creditor and collection agencies directly. Remember, no ID, no current bills. You don't even want to give them your home address, just a PO box, right? Letter demanding, I want to see an original contract. You have to give it to me by federal law. USPS prior, or I'm sorry, USPS certified letter, meaning that they are signing a green card, right? So they sign the green card. Nothing comes. You don't get anything. Then what happens? Well, you tell the bureaus, I didn't get anything. I didn't, and and say, you did, say you get a statement. Well, you tell me, is a statement legal proof that you owe that debt. I just told you about the quick and QuickBooks situation. I can literally create a statement. I could create an invoice stating that you owe me a million dollars. I could do that like that. Does that mean that you owe me the money? No, a statement is not a legally binding contract and you by federal law have the right to see your original contract, all right? So if they just gave you a statement, that is not proof. So you go back to the bureaus and you say, they didn't send me an original contract, they did not send me proof that I owe this debt. You don't say that, the, that you received a statement. You don't say that you received anything from them that's considered invalid. That's not valid. So you just basically turn around to the bureau and said, they did not send me an original contract. They did not send me an original agreement signed by me, which is 100% true. You're not lying to anybody. So for all of you internet trolls who kept saying I was lying, you know, this is mail fraud, this and that, United States Postal Service would not be allowing the service of certified mail if it was considered mail fraud. They just would not allow for it. So it's not considered fraud for you to send and demand, a you know, by way of letter demanding that they give you an original contract or agreement that you sign. And if they don't send you an original contract or agreement, they just send you a statement, here you go, pay my bill. And you tell them, no, that's not an original. I don't see my signature on this. Like, what is this? And you then turn to the bureaus and you say, hey, I didn't receive an original contract or agreement. So I just wanted to clarify that for all the internet trolls out there who just kept wanting to say, well, it's fraud, it's fraud. It's not fraud when you're basically stating that you did not receive an original agreement or contract because you didn't. A statement is not a contract. An invoice is not a contract. Okay. So learn exactly what these things mean before you start throwing around fraud and this is wrong and this and that. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, then go ahead and deal with all of these negative things on your credit report. That's fine. You can absolutely do that. And that's okay with me too. I mean, I have an 800 plus FICO score now because I've worked on my credit over the years. Yes, I did file for bankruptcy back in 2003 due to a lot of very bad and <laughs> pitfally kind of business debt that I slipped into in addition to my first husband committing identity theft after our divorce. So I had to deal with a lot of different debt that I just decided to bankrupt, which is probably a mistake on my part. It took 10 years, but even in historic credit pools that banks still pull to this day, it will still show that I've actually had a bankruptcy, which still bothers me, but it doesn't really affect my FICO score at all. I've actually, obviously if I have an 800, almost it's like it, last time I checked, it was 830 something. So it's a pretty good FICO score. So I know a lot about credit. I know a lot about how these unorthodox credit situations and strategies work. So if you don't want to listen to me, great. No need to troll me. But I find it hard to believe that those that are trolling me are claiming, oh, I don't need this stuff. Why are you watching credit videos? Watch something else. Watch kitty cat videos. Watch, you know, um, WWE videos. Watch something else other than credit videos if you don't need to fix your credit. That doesn't make any freaking sense at all to anybody anywhere. So I just think that people just like to troll people. And that's what losers do, I guess, right? With their time in mommy's basement. Oh, I think she's a loser because of the, the, the. Don't watch the videos then. Hello? One guy said that my tan was too bronze. It's like, dude, <laughs> why are you commenting about my tan? I live in Florida now, by the way. That's probably why I was bronze that day. But who cares? It's like, are you jealous of my tan? Come on, really? All right, so what happens after the USPS certified letter route? Like, what if that doesn't chisel some of these negative things off your credit? Then what do you do? The next step is to have a lawyer letter drawn up. And by the way, if you get my free dispute letters, you'll also be able to get a template that my lawyer provided to me that will allow you to get um, kind of the draft letter that you need for your lawyer. You can hire a lawyer. They'll do letterheads for you all day on Fiverr.com. Just look for somebody who can do legal letters for you. So just type legal letters into the Fiverr.com search bar. 
and you'll find some lawyers that work on the side, they moonlight and they do these little legal letters for people. So use my template that's available at getdisputeletters.com, which is also available in the description box below. And you can use my lawyer letter template, have one of these other Fiverr people just kind of use that as a template. And you have the lawyer send this letter to the credit reporting bureaus as well as to the creditors and collection agencies that are not removing the stuff off your credit. So you can use that strategy as well. And it's basically an intent to sue letter. Basically, you're threatening to sue them for not showing proof that this account or these debts are yours, right? Now, the next step after that, if that doesn't work, is to actually sue your creditors. Yes, you could sue your creditors. Quite, a, You could sue them for a lot of money. In fact, each creditor could be worth anywhere from eight dollars to $15,000, depending on whatever the maximum statute is for a small claims in your state against a company. So you could file small claims lawsuits against Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion separately. And of course, each creditor or collection agency, and you can get upwards of 15,000 depending on the state in which you are located, not where the creditors and collection agencies and bureaus are located, where you're located. So you might wanna check maximum allowable uh, small claims for your state to see how much you could sue. And what happens when you actually pull the trigger and sue any one of these entities is that they realize, oh shoot, we got to get on a plane and fly someplace and we got to spend money to defend this. And we don't even know what we're defending because we don't even have a contract. We don't have an agreement. We don't have anything. And usually this is when you'll start to notice that things will fall off your credit. Now this is this extreme, what I call pulling out the big guns. You only want to do this at the very, very end when all else fails. So I always get a lot of people, you know, especially on YouTube where they're just like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? You don't know anything until you try it out, right? Like you can literally sit around and speculate about a thousand different what if scenarios and you're just not going to know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. What if this happens? What if that happens? Yeah, that might happen, but you don't know unless you try, right? So if you could please, if you want a specific help and you want to have a question for me specifically, Go ahead and, and shoot it in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you're a troll, you will be banned immediately and your comments will be immediately and instantly deleted. So don't even worry about trying to go there because that's going to be handled quickly. But if you have a legit question, it can't be what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? What if that? It can't be that. Um, because we all, nobody knows what's going to happen. We don't even know if there's going to be a tomorrow without, you know, atomic bomb blowing us, us all up. So we don't even know if there is a tomorrow. Like, like we can all just speculate. We just don't know. So most of this stuff does work. You just have to be very, very, very disciplined and to be doing these strategies constantly all the time. Otherwise, what will end up happening is that it won't work because you did it once and then you started watching TV and you just never found it to be valuable enough to keep going at it. So you have to keep hitting it and going over and over and over again, because eventually within a year, you will have all of the negative things on your credit report. They will be gone within a year, guaranteed. So there's some other credit videos that I have about doing what's called um, a restrictive endorsement. If you have a little bit of money, like say a couple hundred dollars to put toward your debt, that can work out really well as well. And so there's other strategies, but if you don't want to pay anything, then the strategies that I just outlined those are the best ones to use. So to be clear, I'm not asking anybody to commit mail fraud or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with sending a USPS, which basically means you go into your local Yoko post office, you walk in there, ask them to send a letter by way of certified mail, and they will help you from that point forward. And you're sending this to the creditors and collection agencies directly. That's how you handle it. There's no fraud involved. I don't recommend anybody do any fraud. I, ne I never said that there was any fraud that I recommended people do. Never ever told anybody that that's the way you should be. That's what you should do. I used an example that was well over 20 years old. That was an example. And again, statute of limitations. I'm sorry for those of you that are like, well, you're going to go to jail for that because it was an example. Hello, do you know what an example is? You also know what statute of limitations are. Like if you don't know what that means, then look it up. There's a Black's Law Dictionary for that, all right? And so I love all of you. I think that there's so many of you that probably quietly and silently watch some of my videos and you're just like, hey, she's awesome, but you don't make any comments. That's cool, you know, but it's always the bad apples that always stand out. And I think they do that on purpose because they want to stand out because they feel so insignificant living in mommy's basement 
being the emasculated men that they think that they are, that they feel like they can go online and post all these negative comments toward a woman who's trying to help other people just like you get out of debt or figure this out financially because maybe you're in a situation where you just don't know what to do. And I'm here to help you. I'm here to help the underdogs be successful. And if you find that that's offensive to you, then don't watch anymore. But there's no need to have negative comments. There really is not. Uh, if you're a real man, you're not going to do that. And so next time you think that you're going to be typing some douchey comment, number one, you will be banned. Number two, the comment will be deleted immediately. And number three, you're just a loser. You're just a douchey loser who has nothing better to do. And I would look at myself in the mirror if I was one of those douchey, douche, douchey loser men. And I would say, what's wrong with me to where I feel like I have to diminish a woman online who's trying to help other people by basically bashing her saying she's a lesbian because she's got short hair and her tan is too, too bronze and you know she's just a loser. It's like, if you don't want me to help you, then just don't watch my videos, all right? That's just the bottom line. But otherwise, if you want me to help you, then shoot me a comment or a question down in the comment section. Just try to be respectful and I will be respectful for you and I will be here to help you in any way I can. But don't forget to get the letters, the free letters. GetDisputeLetters.com. It also includes the special lawyer letterhead template that you can use for your own lawyer that you'd find on Fiverr.com by simply go to Fiverr.com, type in legal letters or lawyer letter and you will be able to find the letters that you're looking for. So if there's something that I didn't clear up, oh, one more thing. The best strategy to use when you're trying to get things off your credit is to go after the closed accounts first. So if you're going to ask me a bunch of questions about does this work with an open account or a revolving account or one that's still open, it does but you have to treat it a little differently. Like if you're late on a credit card a couple times and you just want to catch that up, then you're going to be disputing that you've never been late. So you're just going to tell the credit reporting bureaus you've never been late to your knowledge. To your knowledge. And that's how you dispute that. Um, but this mainly works for closed accounts. You want to focus on your closed accounts and your credit collection agency accounts first and foremost. Those are the easiest to have removed and then work your way up. Work your way up to the bigger stuff like the actual creditors themselves. Then work your way up to foreclosures or judgments or child support or federal loans or whatever other closed accounts you have. Um, repossessions, bankruptcies. That's the bigger stuff that you can wait down the road to start disputing. Start with the smaller stuff first. Always start with the closed accounts and always start with the credit collection agencies first. So I hope that helped you. If it did, give me a nice thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel. Um, otherwise, I sorry, sorry to be a little harsh, but you know, sometimes you get pissed off and you have all these trolls and you're just trying to do the best that you can, can to help people. And you just have these losers that are online that are just like, oh, she's just such a loser. Then don't watch. That's it. There's other stuff to watch, man. There really is. And I just don't understand what's going on with men these days. It's not all men, just a small percentage of the population that are just so tooly and douchey. It's just like, I just don't understand. I mean, where have all the cowboys gone? Like literally, I just don't get why that's necessary. And I just wonder why I know what's going on actually, but you know, that's just my opinion anyway, in my own head, what my opinion is. All right. So if you like the co content, give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel. And this is my last credit video. So drop the mic. Boom. Mic is dropped. Sorry about scratching my nose. I don't know. It's like, I feel, I feel like something landed on my nose, like a bug or something. Um, mic drop. Boom. Done with the credit videos. From now on, I'm going to be talking about only making money stuff because what better way to get out of debt in addition to understanding how to dispute all these things on your credit, what better way to get out of debt than to start making more money? Because if you're making, say, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month, are you really going to be worried about your little bit of debt? No, because you'll be able to pay it off just like that and move forward with your life. So that, those are the videos that I'm going to be focusing in on next. This is Monica Main signing off, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next series of videos. See you later.